Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, Federal Badges workshop. So I will share my screen and we can start looking at the wiki page. So is my, sh my screen shared? Yeah, okay, cool. clear. okay, so the idea for this uh, for this uh, meeting is to try to come up with uh, user stories for uh, each of the personas identified in, uh, in this wiki. Um, we can also, if you think of uh, any personas that we missed out, we can add some. That's fine. And we try to take uh, each of them and try to come up with a few few stories. Um, on how to uh, improve the application. So we'll try to follow the um, initial story type as like a, as a type of user. I want some goal and try to explain why we want that. So we have a good uh, a good reason to do it. I Any think questions? there's um, one persona that's missing that's mm -hmm. pretty common, which is it's a Fedora community member but not necessarily in the mode of collecting badges. They want to, They want badges created for their team or their initiative or their project. They're not going to put in the development effort or the design effort, but they want to submit that badge idea and like have that badge created. Okay, so that would be if you're a community member, uh, so user that would like to submit that would like to submit new a new badges idea. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like sometimes they're very like last minute. Like, oh, FOSDEM is in two weeks. We need a badge for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or sometimes it's like part of an initiative, and there's like a wider plan. So there's like a range there. But almost a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll start with the main, uh, main edit. Okay, so do we want to start by the first one? So designer. Uh, so I put yeah, uh, designer is creating the artwork associated with uh, with a badge. Um, so. Since we have you more, you will be able to uh, give us the sure. the main so I think pain points. <laughs> one of the most common ones is um, as a designer, I'm looking for a badge that I can work on artwork for that will actually happen, so that <laughs> okay. I'm not wasting my time. Because nobody, I, there's that's like one of the common complaints we have from designers is they're doing artwork for badges that never happen because they can't be implemented or they don't follow the guidelines or whatever. So as a designer, I would like to make sure that the artwork, I, the artwork uh, that I produce uh, will be uh, will be. Well, I think it's more, I think it's more finding, finding an artwork ticket to fulfill that's not a waste of time. It's more about, like, it's less about, oh, I'm doing work and I want it used, and it's more about just tell me what to do that will be useful, because there's a lot okay. of open artwork tickets, and it's hard to understand which ones are the most useful to do. I would like to find an artwork ticket that I can implement. Um, uh, so that I'm contributing and not wasting time. Mm -hmm. could, could this be could this be solved by using something like a I'm thinking current board where you submit the ID in the backlog, it get, it moves into a, the technical part because the technical part is going to be the limiting factor, and the artwork comes only once the technical part is done. We've had the equivalent of that 
in the old track system, and I think in Pagor too, where it's tagged with different things. But the problem is that designers don't understand like Trello boards. They don't understand ticket systems that deeply. So they just see artwork needed and they don't understand how to translate the different columns or the different tags to understand which ones. And a lot of times they'll sit there and they're not even triaged. So it'll just say artwork needed and it's not clear, you know, that it's actually been triaged. So maybe the workflow should be a bit simpler or better documented or? Yeah, honestly, like I would say that for, for artwork contributors in particular, because like they're not typically sophisticated like issue tracker or Kanban users, if there was just like a simple page that just only displayed the ones that have all the approvals, right? And showed those as like newbie friendly ones, because that's like th the biggest issue here is for newbies that don't have experience and we lose a lot of them because of all this confusion. It's not approved artwork, it's approved artwork requests because the artwork's mm -hmm. not done yeah. yet. That is easy for me to know uh, which request I should work on. Right. Another one that's common is like, I'm the artist, I did the artwork. The person who requested the badge is asking, well, where's the badge? Can you push the badge? I need to be able to find some, like I end up being the contact point of finding somebody who knows how to push the badge to the back end. So it's like, as a designer, I need to be able to get a status update or contact someone who can push the badge. And honestly, it would be even better if like, as a designer, I was not the liaison, I do my artwork and I'm done. <laughs> and the person who requested the badge can get status updates, self-service and, and make the request to the badge pusher on their own. That would be even better. So as a designer, I should not be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. To, uh, to push the HD production. Yep. I don't think we need to uh, show that on this one, pretty clear. Um, all right, uh, so. I think those are the main the, trouble ones sorry. I can think of. I mean, there's other user stories for designers, but I think those are like the main pain point stories. All right, does anybody else have uh, some thoughts on that? Or should we move on to the next person? The, the, the only other one I can think of is just getting attention, like, especially when you're getting to the bottom of the barrel and the only badge artwork requests left are ones that you don't know as a designer, is this even implementable? Can somebody actually do this? Um, so it's like getting, as a designer, I need to get timely feedback on someone familiar with how the system works with, with a developer. So should... On what badges are, basically I, as a designer, I need to be able to get triage help from developers in a timely manner, I think. Um, should the, um, for example, because we said that uh, if we had this uh, page where the approved artwork request were, was available, should this be approved only if we already have all the rules implemented and, and things like that? So. We know that it it's should, actually doable. I guess this is more, this is less for newbie designers and this is more for the designers managing the project. Because if like, 
I think if we had a page that showed all only approved artwork that was ready to be designed, that would be great. We'd probably churn through that really quickly, but then there would probably still be a big backlog of untriage stuff where we okay. don't know if it's worth doing the artwork. And as like, I, you could say as a senior level designer or as a maintaining designer or something, a design maintainer, um, I need to be able to get timely feedback, triage feedback from developers on the feasibility of badge requests. Mm, as a maintainer designer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> designer with a hat. <laughs> I need a uh, timely... Oh, I need help tri triaging. Timely help triaging. Um, <laughs> badge requests. Timely. Yeah. So that I know which request can be implemented. I think that's about it. All right, so um, we can move to the administrator persona. So I describe this as the person which actually um, managing uh, the badges on, on the badges application. So can create new one, give new one, edit or delete badges. Um, I'm not sure we have anybody that is, do we have anybody that is um, uh, familiar with the process there? If not, I think there was one main complaint by Miro that there's some of that. Um, and in the consent ticket, he wrote that yeah, the current new badges deployment sucks, <laughs> but there is no dev, uh, dev time to make it any better. Um, so I looked quickly. We have a, a SOP for badges, and there is like quite a big uh, list of uh, things that you should do to push new badges. And it sounds like yeah, there is like a lot of manual steps. So uh, maybe a simple user story should, would be to try to uh, automate some of those um, those steps or make it easier. As an administrator, I want it. Uh, I want the process of creating new badges to be as automated as possible, so I can mm -hmm. save time. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I think that good. Uh, I'm not sure we have anything else on like give. Well, at least I'm, I'm I'm not super aware of the process to actually give or edit. I think to give badges we have like you have to actually log into a box and run some scripts. So maybe. Oh, I've had to I've had to do that before. Um, there's there's a web UI that um, it's very confusing. So if if a badge can't be automated. Then there's a process where when the badge is created in the back end, um, different FAST accounts can be given permission to manually award that badge. So I've had to manually award that badge for like different FAD events and stuff that I was the organizer for. And it's very confusing. Um, you have to navigate to the badge itself on the badges page, logged in with your FAST ID, and there's like this weird form at the bottom of the page that just appears if you have that permission. There's no like overview page that shows you which badges you have permissions for. 
and it's very slow. You have to do it one at a time. Like you can't just enter in a comma separated list of accounts. You have to load the page fresh every time. It's super slow. It doesn't give you good feedback. It seems to crash sometimes in the middle of it. So yeah, as that's not really an administrator though. That's more, it's more, I guess maybe it's another persona. It, it's basically a, um, an individual badge maintainer. I mean, it's nice that there's a front end to do it, but it's just not a scalable front end at all. It's very painful to go through. And there's no auditing for it either, I think. So like, for example, I've gotten into situations where someone was given a badge that I had this permission for. Other people had permission to award the badge that should not have had permission to award that badge. And it was awarded to someone who really shouldn't have gotten it. And it's not something that you can audit. Like who gave this person the badge and when did they give it to them? Um, and I don't even know if I, if as the badge owner, I don't know that I have permission to revoke it. So we've had some, I, I wanna say the only like one or two, but they were pretty tense drama filled situations around this. Um, so for the individual badge maintainer, I would like the process to award uh, a badge to be more scalable, because I might have a list of like 100 people who attended an event and I just want to like upload a CSV and be done with it. I don't want to have to mm -hmm. fill out a form and load the page 100 times. Yeah. So that can, I can award the Mass badge award to... badges. Oh, yeah. yeah that's okay. fine. I can mess up. Okay, another one is like yeah. as a badge maintainer, um, I I need to be able to audit who gave someone a badge and when it was awarded so that I can ask them like, why did you do this? And this, this might be like under that umbrella, but it would be nice to get a notification too. If somebody who's not me awarded a badge that I own, so I can kind of know what's going on. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> we can refine this later. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one was as an individual badge maintainer, it would be nice to have permissions to revoke a badge if it was awarded an error. And one was about uh, getting notification, I think. Yeah. My badge is awarded. And I would I would caveat that with if it's a manual badge because if it's an automatic badge, I don't care. I don't want to oh, get yeah. spammed. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's a human being entering it, I, I'd like to know. So I would like. To, uh, I'm, when my manually awarded badge, maybe. Do you want to know, do you want to receive a notification or do you want to have the possibility of reviewing it? Oh, well that's even better. But but then you get it, the only thing is that complicates things because then you get into like a hierarchy. Like if there's three people who manage this badge, who's who's the top cheese? 
You know what yeah, I mean? And, you'll be, and you can become a bottleneck too. I'm not, I'm not speaking yeah. about reviewing, like approving. I'm speaking about uh, you know having the history of uh, who has done. So I think that's why. That bad, who has the oh, yeah, that's the audit one. Yeah. Audit. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So you, we keep history of who did what and uh, when. Okay. That's, that's quite great, I think. Um, Irene's going to bust up this underground network we have of like using badges instead of as like a currency for doing illegal stuff. It, it, oh, some that, people are very into like getting more badge points and their their ranking. I whatever. <laughs> I I'm definitely one of those people. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you're not cheating. <laughs> I mean, people. I think people see the design team badges as like an easy way to cheat, you know? Yeah. When I see things that I can do, and then someone's like, "And you get a badge for it," I do that thing. <laughs> All right. So, should we move to the next one? I, I think contributors. Uh, I added that as a user that would like to create a new badge. I think it's the one we we added there. No, but the federal committee member is there that would like to submit new badge idea. Or I read contributor as the person who actually implements the badge, who like writes the YAML or whatever. Okay. So maybe I would I would just make it clear. I don't know if it's YAML. I'm just guessing. I think it is, but yeah, it is. It yeah. Some badges require actual like code, right? Or is it always YAML? It's always no, YAML. It's always YAML, but there is a oh. that, yeah. But that, if you cool. I think for some things it could require code depending on like the subsystem. Like if you want something that's automatically awarded when some event and some infrastructure piece happens and there isn't a fed message or whatever that you can trigger off of it, then you have to do implementation work too. Yeah, because I have a ticket where I wanted to make some funny Bodhi badges, and I think it would be more in that second category because there's not fed messages for those things. Yeah. 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 Also, also sometimes you probably need to add those features in, like for Pegual badges, we did add a Clem add a, a PRN to handle those badges accordingly. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a few levels of this type of contributor. There's the contributor that everything they need is already on fed message. They're just doing the YAML. And then you have the contributors who have some ability to actually go to the upstream infra apps and modify them. And then there's the communication between the two. Like, hey, I wrote this YAML, but I need this. Can mm -hmm. you upstream maintainer do this for me? So those are sort of three main cases, I think, for contributor. Yeah. So if, yeah. if in my case, if I if I were to modify Bodhi so it sent a fed message when the thing I want a badge to happen, then I could write YAML in the badges thing. Right. That might, that mm -hmm. might be a good way to do it. Yeah, the, I think that's what um, what Mio was adding here also. That uh, there. Badges usually get ready on artwork side and then sit forever to get the rules that you know files because nobody involved is capable of creating a new rule. So I think it's not it's not very straightforward to create the new rule. So I, I'm not sure if we have a good um, documentation for that or I don't. Know. Yeah. So, so maybe like as a contributor, I want to create uh, a YAML, like a simple YAML, but I don't even know where to get started. Uh, so I guess I want to know where to get started on creating a straightforward YAML rules. A lot of time I believe it's uh, the issue is uh, like probably it's not uh, even if it's, if it's there the contributor because the lambda things are so complicated the rules are so mm -hmm. complicated to write so people have no time to write it to think and write it. Well, like what we do, I mean, I, I kind of think there's a parallel there as a, a quick aside, like with the artwork, we definitely have a spectrum of abilities in terms of people's ability to do the artwork. So what we do is we have a set of like 
reusable assets of like pandas and badgers and snakes and mushrooms or whatever that people who might not be able to illustrate on their own can kind of take and remix and make new badges using them. So it might be interesting if, if there's common Lambda rule issues that have already been solved in other YAML files, if there was some sort of sheet that was like a template, like if you need to do this in your badge rules, follow this as a template so people can kind of copy, paste, and grab and go in the same way that they do the, the artwork. I mean, that's I don't know if that's idea. possible with YAML, but if it was, it, that might be a good. What's Maybe you can have like, uh, so yeah, so there, uh, so there are basically, if I remember, there are a couple of uh, like five, six common types of templates. So maybe we can uh, have a script where it asks like which type you want to make and then give yeah. a basic layout for the YAML. And then you probably That's need great. to edit it, but then probably we can work on this and have a script around that. I would even push it beyond cheat sheet and and say exactly that like a template library right or you know it's the script would pull from a template library to give you sort of a th something to work from <laughs> of the most commonly used yeah, or, or, yeah. lambda whatever <laughs> That's a technical term, lambda, whatever. Yeah. For example, we for. I found that uh, when I had to work on the one for uh, Pagio badges, um, we have a small uh, unit test that maybe we could try to make it more generic where you actually, you would be able to uh, um, have the fed message that you expect and test your YAML to see that uh, that could be like a tight, uh, tight feedback loop where, where you run that a comment, you write your, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think it would be too, too hard to do. You would like maybe have like two files, one where you put like the expected fed message and then your, uh, your YAML file and you just run one comment and it gives you if it works or not, something like that. That would be fantastic. You think it would be possible, Fayan? or? Yeah, so um, I think it could be possible. So I was looking, trying to look to the badges and uh, I was just trying to remember how the Lambda function looks. So if we give, a, so basically Fed message is a dictionary. So if we give a dictionary and then um, ask for the key, so maybe we can uh, make one around that. So another part comes in where it um, basically like Koji builds, like we have, uh, uh, when you do a 50th build or 1000th build, all those rules also need to be generated. So we need to extract those also, just not Lambda. So mm. We can look around it. It's not that difficult because uh, there would be common badges. Like once in a blue moon, we might need um, manual interruption and uh, build the rules from scratch. Do we have anything else on, for the contributor? Well, I think these are all sort of for the the lower level contributor. So I think you would have one like, as I'd say lower level, I don't mean it like that. I mean more someone who is not <laughs> like an upstream maintainer of infra apps. Um, so it could be like as, as a YAML contributor, um, I would like to be able to figure out or locate the correct maintainer to add fed messages that I need for my my rules. 
because maybe they don't even know like who's the right person to talk to or how to even get that conversation started. Which application or which person? Or? Yeah, I'd say upstream maintainer. Yeah. I would assume that they would know the application. I don't know that that's too wild an assumption. Maybe we can add this as into the template of the when we are creating the badge uh, issue. Yeah, yeah, like kind of like you check off which one that you need rules for or whatever, or that you need a message yeah. for. And if we can have a very detailed uh, issue template, basically when you're creating the issues, you have to build a bunch of data in uh, so that it gets easier on our side also. So maybe they need help, like probably we need to, so, so suppose for a first time contributor coming down to give a badge idea, they might feel that overwhelming and a lot of things. So uh, but uh, suppose um, there is already a batch idea and somebody wants to write a rule for it. We need to have something on the issue itself that this is a upstream maintainer. Please go and contact something on this. That's right. Right. So. It might be interesting to just, just a random idea is if you could sort through the list if you could easily access and sort through the list of YAML files that have already been created for other badges, like just as a one stop shop, and you could sort them by app. So like if you know that your rule is gonna involve working with Bodhi, you could look at like the 10 other Bodhi related YAMLs that are in the system for badges to see how they did it. Yeah, so maybe so like as a like good example. Uh, yeah, like as a contributor, I would like to easily be able to access and sort through all of the existing YAML rules in the system. Because right now, I, I don't know that that's so easy. I think, I think the way that I do it is I go on the website and I look up the badge and then there's like a link at the bottom to get to the YAML. But there may be a repo somewhere I don't know about. Yeah, there is a repo, but I don't think it's very obvious which which rules is the associated to which application? I think the, the rules has got the name of the badge, but sometimes it's not, um, not really oh, So it's like a metadata issue. Well, don't, uh, don't, don't the fed message things have like a namespace that would indicate which, which app? So we can yeah, get it from the yeah, topic from the topic, we can figure it out, but we need a very good search around the rules. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's possible. I mean, the metadata is there. It's just not yeah. easily usable right now. Okay, uh, do we want to move to the next persona or do we have anything else, uh, something more on the contributors side of things? Probably move. Okay, the developer, so someone that develops and maintains the application. So I think the Big thing me that I I think of now it's the deployment of the application. Um, it would be nice if it was uh, more automated and could just like um, push new releases like uh, with like just like a, um, a 
commit or something like that. Continuous delivery. Are the badges already moved to OpenShift? Not yet. No. But we are planning to. Yeah, this it should be easier to deploy it after this. There is one thing that I found a bit confusing with the on the developer side is that we got so many repos. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, imagine because I think we got one. yeah, we got one repo with uh, the front end, one repository with the uh, back end that accessing uh, the APIs to access the database, one repository that is the fed message cons uh, consumer, and then we got the other repository for the rules. So, like, super confusing to, at the beginning, at least for someone who's looking to, to start contributing to this project, it's like super confusing to find where, what is what and uh, where I should look. Yeah, so did they have, right now we have, the, the, did they have the this same documentation? Say again, no. yeah. Say again, yeah. Oh. Oh. Go on, say. So right now we have three. So right now we have three repos. The one, uh, one is the one which uh, uh, makes the connection with the DB. It's basically a API around the database. Then we have the pyramid uh, application which uh, uses the DB API to get all the data. And the third one is Fed Badges, which is the Fed, uh, Fed Message Consumer, which has a rule generator and rules parser. And the fourth one is probably the one where we maintain all our assets for the badges, the rules and the... So we can probably leave the federal badges, which is on regular side, and merge the consumer DB API and the pyramid application into one because uh, the documentation is also separated and it becomes very difficult to even like to test the application i need to like probably move around the repos and start three different servers and yeah work around even if uh, for the deployment later if we look to have something a bit more automated it would be easier to just have one repository yeah right do we need uh, your own consumer for fedora badges or could we use the data grapper? No, we need uh, the consumer uh, because uh, uh, it's real time. Basically, as soon as uh, it listens to all the messages in Fed message and uh, keeps uh, parsing them, it would be very difficult for data grapper because um, I don't find data grapper to be very reliable. Like if you do uh, 100 queries, it would go down. Okay. Do we have anything else on the developer? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so another thing from my side would be like uh, one thing which is like if I push uh, new things, like we have the path uh, support for a long time now, probably two years now, but we don't have a front end to it, which is basically one of the biggest uh, next thing in badges. So if we can have mockups for badges and uh, basically the stuck around because we have been planning or revamp of the UI revamp for uh, badges. So I would like a new front end design or, uh, or UI design. So, so yeah, w one is as a developer, I would like a, a new UI design for badges. And the other one would be as a developer, I would like a UI mockups for the uh, newer features that we push. So that um, oh, 
or it makes the UI better. <laughs> Is that okay, Sian? Yeah. Yeah. So in the administrator, we can probably add another thing, which is like the admin panel is not very easy to use. So probably a better admin panel and badges. Next, uh, so are we happy to move to the next persona or anything else on the developer side? We can move to the next one. Okay. So the community member and this one, like more related to the uh, community members that are collecting the badges. Leading to the user of badges project the badges. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do we have any thing on this persona? I guess a lot a lot of things would be Maybe for the UI, no? Is the UI like very yeah, uh, uh, better UI and a faster website? So in the better UI, do you have like more like specific example what could be improved? No. Uh, so right now, like one of the th oh sorry. <clears throat> yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Oh well, one of the things and. This isn't necessarily like what the badges user want. It's more like what the Fedora project wants. But one of the ideas that we had for badges that we never implemented was using it as almost like a training platform. So to have a set of badges that were related that you would like work your way up. So for example, as a badges user, if I want to become a designer and join the design team and I've earned like two or three design badges, I want to know what are the next ones I should be working towards and what I have to do and how far I am to achieving some higher level goal, like, you know, becoming a design team, whatever, a certified Fedora designer, something like that, or, you know, what, whatever the area is within Fedora. But the idea is that it's not just like, like the fun little one-offs are great, they're, they're fun, but we also want people to learn. Okay. Uh, so. I would like to use badges as a learning path to... We also um, planned gamification around the badges project to gamify the complete. So it was like, as a badges user, I would like to know what are the next badges I need to complete to achieve a certain skill or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the next ones I should work on? And I would say maybe a closely related one is as a badges user, I want and need motivation to to keep going. You know, like like I don't know if anybody uses something like Duolingo, 
where mm -hmm. you're using it to like learn a skill and then if you don't log on for a while it harasses you <laughs> something like that where it like i i want it i want the system to check in on me and like help keep me accountable for my learning To remind me. I'd say, you say remind or motivate or, you know, help motivate me to keep going. Mm -hmm. But I keep... Um... So that you learn your skill, the skills you want to learn, oh, but... you know, so that I learn and improve or whatever. So basically, you don't fall out in between and uh, forget about it. That just will remind you, and then you can log in and start working on it again. Yeah, exactly. Did you add something, Sian, before? Uh, or was yeah, so I was telling, like, the system? first... So the first thing we have is that the backend is actually implemented. We don't have the UI for it. Like we can totally work on the UI to implement a lot of things, but the backend is there, but we never got to work on it. <laughs> uh, another thing is uh, the website is really slow. So for, probably from the back, and I have got a lot of complaints from different badges users that uh, it would be helpful to have a better, like more faster website. Uh, and another thing would be, uh, which I have got feedback is a very a much better. So right now we just list down the badges that we have on a page. There's an explore page where we list down all the badges and people have actually requested me to have that more intuitive so that I know which all uh, badges to approach approach next rather than ha so. Right now, if I want to know which all badges I want to achieve, I need to go to each and every badges and see the description and uh, uh, basically see the description and see if I can achieve that or it falls on my goal or not. It's not very, uh, you cannot really say what the badges does from the, uh, the icon. So basically, if we can have uh, badges to, as a federal badges user, I probably would like badges to give me on the UI itself, suggest me these are the badges you can go for, or uh, a much better search page for badges, uh, list of all be, the badges. Would that be covered by this story, not to know what are the next badges I need to complete to achieve a skill? So if you start something, it will tell you, oh, the next thing you should do is that, and, or do you think it's something kind different? Of, kind of. Yeah, I think part of it too is not just. I think what you were saying is not just the next badges to do, but what I've already accomplished. And we actually there is a front end design for it that wasn't ever implemented, where rather than having a flat list of just the badges in whatever random order, they're categorized, and they would give you a thing. So like e each badge, at least the artwork is coded, so like they have different categories. Like there's, um, I think there's like a whole infra and then packager and design marketing content. You know, there's like different categories of badges. So like if you had 80% of your badges were in sort of the content and design category, then it would classify you as like a content design expert kind of thing. Right. So it's almost like as a badges user, I would like a good high level picture of what I've already accomplished. And it's, it's, um, I mean, where that also comes into place, where we were looking to do in other areas of the Fedora project, like we wanted to do a thing in HyperKitty and we wanted to do a thing in other infra apps where people have accounts, is to show the person's badge personality or profile 
So, like, if you're having an argument with someone on a mailing list and say, mm. like, all of their badges are for, like, design stuff and they're arguing with you about a kernel patch, then you know they don't probably have the background required. So, like, you understand the context of the conversation versus someone who, like, has achieved all the development badges and, oh, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to argue with this person or whatever. It, it, it gives you a sense of the work that that person has done, you know, like, oh, well, you've been a long time contributor, you've accomplished all these things, maybe I'll give you a little bit more deference on the mailing list or whatever, you know. So, so I guess there's two prongs there. It's, I would like to have an overview of the badges so that I can have a good picture of my accomplishment. It's also, it's, it's, it's sort of not as a badges user necessarily, but more as like a general Fedora community member. I would like to have a good picture of other Fedora community members, um, it's not it's not that one. It's more um, just generally like Fedora wide, like a person I encounter in Fedora. I just want to know very quickly at a glance what their background is, because maybe I don't know who they are, and I just want to know you know where they come from, what they do in in the project. So, conscious of the time, we got five uh, four minutes left, so I think that will be the last. Uh, story we do, but I'm planning to maybe run something similar uh, next week or the week after, and maybe we'll try to uh, categorize so, um, or like, uh, prioritize those stories and maybe try to go a bit deeper in some of them and look at maybe uh, acceptance criteria and what, what we need uh, to achieve them. So I would like to use badges to get uh, um, to get uh, to get Maybe to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to know, understand other community members. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we got. Uh, a lot of uh, great content there, so um, thank you everyone for joining and contributing to this session. I think it was uh, super cool. Um, this was so, very good. Thank you for running it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no problem. And yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll share this uh, on uh, on the list and try to publish the recording also on YouTube. And um, I'll try to run uh, another session also to go into a bit more details for some of those. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Bye. Bye. Bye.